Okay, so hey guys, and here we are for the next part in the EAF1 Major, Minardi Major career mode, where we try to take Minardi to be the best team around, and we are very close to doing that, actually, because if you look in the Constructors' title, second, two points ahead of Williams, a fair way ahead of Benetton and everyone else behind them, actually. I'm miles off of Ferrari, but that's actually the point for this episode. Um, Ferrari could take the Constructors' title, uh, this race and so and Michael Schumacher could also take the driver's title of this race if all goes well for them in the next Grand Prix which is the Belgium Grand Prix around Spa so really it's looking you know the season's pretty much already come to an end we've already decided you know who's going to win the drivers and constructors title and we only had to come sick from the constructors this season and it looks like we've firmly done that so Really, uh, there's not really much more point to the next few races, but we've still got four races left. It would be five, because obviously this is the 2000 calendar. And it's got, well, it's exactly two calendar, uh, it's exactly the same as the 2000 season calendar. Apart from the fact, in 2000 there was um, the race around Indianapolis, which isn't in this game, so there's only four races left rather than five this season. But, you know, that, that's okay, I suppose. Get the season done and over with as quickly as possible. And there shouldn't be much news because come this part of the season there really isn't a lot of news and announcements. So you know I'll cut to see if there actually are any announcements. Okay so we have got some news and really this is sponsor news so you're wondering why am I showing you this. But I mean this says a lot about you know the teams who aren't doing well does it. Because Sauber aren't, well they're doing as well as Sauber normally do. Um, they've lost sponsorship, BAR lost sponsorship, McLaren who have fallen from Grace massively have lost sponsorship and Arrows who are just firmly at the back have lost two sponsors so really it says a lot really I mean if teams are losing sponsorship that really does say a lot about the strength of them this season okay so we have got some confirmations from both Arrows and Benetton well let's look at the Arrows one first it's Gary Anderson as their new technical director and Gary Anderson I mean I know him I've heard of him I do know about Gary Anderson so that's actually a pretty good announcement for Arrows. I don't know how highly rated Gary Anderson is in the game, but I think, I can, I imagine he must be one of the more highly rated ones. I know he's not top four, but he must be He must be better than Arrows' current technical director and, you know, where Arrows are at the minute. So I reckon Gary Anderson does definitely have the potential to boost Arrows up. So that's good news to Arrows, really. So, you know, Gary Anderson... Gary Anderson hopefully can take them places. And now let's look at Benetton. Okay, Rob Taylor as their chief designer. Again, that's not that's not an amazing announcement. You would have hoped for better from Benetton, but at the same time, Neil Oatley and Roy Brin have already got places confirmed for next season. Obviously, Neil Oatley with us. So, really, you know, and Benetton, they kind of left it late because we all know <laughs> the. You know, the market for people in this game, it's a first-come, first-serve, really. So, and with Benetton leaving, there's right till the end of the season, you know. They don't really have much choice other than to keep who they've already got, which, you know, isn't an amazing announcement. I, mean, I know for a fact Benetton could do better. And, yeah, I'll cut and see if there's any more news. So, four days passed and there wasn't any news. Well, there was a couple of sponsor news, but it wasn't interesting. But we've got the um, Belgian Grand Prix now, which should be very interesting. Obviously, it's a legendary track. It's caused um, or created a lot of exciting races over the years with its unpredictable weather and everything. Obviously, the 98 race was fantastic. I mean, even if alone for the um, the crash coming out of La Source, which was caused by David Coulthard, that alone puts the race in history. But also, you know, a Jordan 1-2, it, it was a legendary race. 99 for us last season wasn't too interesting of a race from memory. I mean, I know Minardi didn't score points that race, so that's really the key thing for me. Um, but the Belgian Grand Prix, obviously it's straight line. It favours, you know, straight line top end speed. So with our Mercedes-Benz engine being the most powerful on the grid, you know, hopefully we should do alright this race. I mean, I said the same thing at Bel um, in Hockenheim. Didn't really turn out, but we did get a podium finish, so... You never know, we should do well here um, at the legendary Spa Franco Schon. Okay, so practice has ended, and that, well, instantly you can see there's something wrong. Um, Damon Hill wasn't able to set a lap time. I'll show you why. He had an engine failure. Now, 
The problem is, is with qualifying, I always run... It's sort of a risky strategy because, you know, I fit new parts in time for the race, and then through practice and qualifying, they run the same worn parts. So as you can see, you know, Mikasaras is also close to a blowout, which if it happens in qualifying, will be quite dramatic. And the problem is, is if you look at the engines, we've only got five fourth model engines left, one third model, and we got pl well, I mean, we're not going to run out of engines, but we are going to have to take a you know, a huge performance hit, especially if we have to use the fir uh, the first model. So we've got a sort of an engine so shortage, and I don't want to fit a new engine in Damon Hill's car just for qualifying, because, you know, because then I'll... Because if I don't replace it for the race, it has a risk of failing during the race, and if I have one just for qualifying, that's a waste of an engine. So what I have done is, this is Owen Green's car, or it was anyway, Owen Green's car had, you know, first model everything on it. And I've now suited up, so it's got the new electronics brakes, you know, and aero parts, so it's quicker, apart from the fact it's still got a first model engine, so Damon Hill's going to be running in this car, it's going to be a lot slower, especially as it's been tested by Owen Green once, um, several months ago, so it's not going to be that quick, but that's what Damon Hill's going to have to use, because... We need to save the engines really for the end of the season. And that's why he hasn't set a lap time. Um, how back to here? Yes. Two other people haven't set lap times. Uh, the Arrows of Della Rosa didn't set a lap time, which is quite worrying for the Arrows. They may well have run out of engines. They might have had a similar thing to us. I don't know. And the other car that hasn't set a lap time is Eddie Irvine and the Stewarts. So I don't know what's happened to Eddie Irvine. I don't know. I mean, there wasn't any shortage of Peugeot engines last year. The only teams that ran out of engines were Arrows, who ran out of, you know, around this point in the season, actually, and Sauber, but only one car was without an engine. I believe that was only for the last race of the season. So I think, you know, Eddie Irvine just had a really unlucky practice session, not, you know, not able to set a lap time. But, you know, Mick Asalo's best of the rest, I suppose that's good. You know, Ralph Schumacher, you know... Mikasalo's beaten the person who I normally regard as the best of the rest this season, which is Ralph Schumacher, and David Coulthard, the other person who I regard as best of the rest, was beaten by Takaki and his teammates, so not too great of a performance there, but well, we'll just have to see what happens in qualifying, because judging by this, qualifying can be very interesting. So qualifying has ended here in Belgium, and it really was a really eventful session with a lot of surprises and a lot of incidents. So let's just go through it now. Pole position was no surprise and was not much of a fiasco at all, as Michael Schumacher comfortably took pole position, as he has done with every other race so far this season, as comfortably ahead of the second place man, which is his teammate Neil McEwen, meaning it's a Ferrari front row for tomorrow's race. The second row was taken up by both Williamses, with Ralph Schumacher again proving that he is the quickest of the rest as he lines up third with his teammate Takaki just behind him fourth. David Coulthard, who is the other driver who is often regarded as the other best of the rest, lines up fifth which is a very good result for the Benetton, with Giancarlo Fisichella in the McLaren despite using an underpowered Ford Z-Tech engine is sixth. Jean Lacy and the other Benetton is seventh, with Damon Hill having an engine failure during practice meant that he had to use a Minardi with an old engine during qualifying. And because that older engine was underpowered compared to the newer model engine, it cost him around a couple of seconds a lap and is why he's down in eighth. Behind the stricken Damon Hill are both Jordans of Barrichello and Frentzen, then Jacques Villeneuve, then the Sauber of Alexander Wurz, who has had a very impressive session just ahead of the rookie Laurent Redon. Bicasalo had a disappointing session himself, even more so than his teammate, as an engine failure on the second lap or his first flying lap of the session meant he had to resort to a spare car, and with a lack of aero parts within the team, Minardi couldn't afford to fit the new aero parts which had been developed over the season, and so was essentially using the car which was developed right at the start of the season in pre-season testing. And what was worse for Bicasalo is his outlap in his fully tuned and modified car was actually quicker than this older car with its older model parts. 
and under that knowledge, it's understandable why Mikasalo lines at 14th, as he has a car with much worse aerodynamics, engine power, electronics, and brakes. And his session was also made worse by the first spare car he went out in, Minardi forgot to fill it up with fuel. Johnny Herbert and McLaren lines at 15th, ahead of both Stuarts of Trilly and Irvine, with Irvine actually able to set a lap time unlike in practice. Behind them are both Pross of Zonta and Diniz, with Zanardi continuing his very poor season as he's down in 20th and is away behind his teammate Wurtz. De La Rosa is the last person to set a lap time in the Arrows in 21st, with there being no 22nd. That was because Marc Genet, unfortunately this time, wasn't able to set a lap time, as De La Rosa wasn't able to do that in practice, thanks to a suspected engine failure. The same problem most likely happened to Marc Genet in qualifying and means he'll start 22nd. But with this track already taking the lives of four engines before the race has even started, this could be a very high retirement race. Okay, so that was a very interesting qualifying, and as you can see, I've sorted out the race strategy, but really that was a shambolic practice and qualifying for us. So here's car one, which is Damon Hill's. There's the blown up engine, which we're going to completely fix. So Damon Hill's car is now fine. We're going to tell him to now drive that car. And now the second car of Mikasalo. And as you can see, the second car of Mikasalo has had a bargeable failure. So actually, I think I was wrong in the qualifying report. I think I thought... Salo had an engine failure, it turns out he had a bargeable failure, which if I knew that would have been an easy fix. Oh no, you can't fix cars mid-session, so yeah, the car would have been stricken anyway. But we could completely fix that, so he's got a fresh car. There's Owen Green's car, which, <laughs> you, you know, is it was used in pre-season testing, but Owen Green hasn't been touched since. And then there's the fourth car, which we forgot to put fuel into when, you know, we, we put Mikasalo in the fourth car, we got to put fuel into it, unfortunately. And there's the fifth car which he had to use, which, you know, look. That's that's how we started the season. But look, Mercedes, Magneti, Morelli, AP, and us, we've just improved so much over the season. And there's no wonder he set a very poor lap time. And as you can see, the chassis is a low rating. But, you know, that's how it's been all season. It's just That's just thanks to Gabriel Trelosi. Next season will be higher thanks to Neil Oatley designing the 2001 season chassis. Anyway... We better tell Salo to be in the in to be uh, to be in this car because otherwise he will be around, I believe, about twelve seconds a lap slower. Genuinely, he will be about twelve seconds a lap slower. And the fact his quickest lap was his out lap, you know, from when he was in his main car, says a lot. But I know if you look through a lap times, he's about twelve seconds a lap slower than he was in practice. So that really does say a lot about how much we've improved over the course of the season, and everyone else in fact actually, all the all the teams. But, let's just start the session. And I'm going to accelerate time here because this is the second time I've tried to record this episode, and this game is just, this game is broken. I mean, literally, it just, going around Eau Rouge, if I watch on the replay cameras Eau Rouge, it, the game just breaks watching Eau Rouge, so... We're going to leave it, but anyway, coming to the race, actually, and Damon Hill is in 4th, and considering he qualified 8th, I believe, that's fantastic, but look, look at that arrows there. Actually, has has Mark Genet retired? I on, I'm only seeing one arrow, so I don't want to click on the TV camera. Look how far ahead Schumacher is already. Wow, now that says a lot. And there's that Neil, Neil McEwen taking the weirdest line there. Hang on, let's get an onboard camera here. Uh, no, reverse chase. Onboard camera... Neil McEwen really was taking a weird light. And look, there's only one Arrows yet. I'm pretty certain Arrows, you know, they've run out of engines. So that's happened again because there's only one Arrows left running off De La Rosa. And yeah, Mark Genet's season's ended. And I'm pretty certain next race, De La Rosa's season will have ended. But look at the gap between Schum well, Michael Schumacher and Ralph Schumacher, in fact. It's... That is, that is dominance. I've never seen dominance from a driver, really. That's... In the space of two laps, that's magnificent. Where is Mikasalo? He's in seventh. Okay, that's actually very good for him. Stuck up behind uh, Fizzy Keller and David Coulthard. Okay, and I'm going to get off of these cameras because Spa just seems to just break the game. And there you go. There's Mark Genet with his confirmed engine failure. So, Genet's season, tragically, has come to an end already. And there's Wurtz with an engine failure. 
okay, we know Sauber had issues of engine failures, you know, right at the end of last season, and this really isn't going to help their cause. And now there's Laurent Redom with a barge failure, same like when Mika Salo, uh, Frenson's had a, um, an engine failure, you know, that's why we don't use Ford ZTEX anymore. And what made Jordan do? Well, I mean, that's a long story. We covered that ages ago. But, I mean, look, look how quick the Minardi... Okay. Look how quick Mika Salo is. I mean, still Damon Hill. Look how quick we are. Okay. What happened to Neil McEwen? A suspension failure for Neil McEwen. Okay, we're now in second and third. If Michael Schumacher retires, we could get a 1-2. Zanardi's had driver failure. It says a lot about his skill, which I went over a lot last year. Um, okay, Raul Schumacher's back in second. We could be challenging him for the race win if his brother retires. Okay, so... This is looking comfortable. Damon Hill's had a Mercosalo. Okay, well, you know, they're both running in the cars they normally are. But obviously, Damon Hill's a bit more comfortable with the aero parts around this track, which Mercosalo. No, Mercosalo did have used to that in practice, actually. So, Damon Hill was just genuinely doing a very good job. So, that's very good for him. And the, it seems to calm down with retirement rates. Uh, look at that Johnny Herbert, the second slowest car running. That's. That's really bad. I mean, that says a lot about McLaren and their pace issues um, this season. It's just like um, McLaren Honda in real life. And I forgot I wasn't accelerated time there. That's that's bad. Um, no, Johnny Herbert has moved up in the 12th. Okay, so scrap everything I just said. Eddie Irvine, the Stewart team, they've run out of fuel. That is really bad, actually. Um, okay, we've got a string of retirements here. Okay, so Deniz with a bargeable failure. Sean Lacey with a driver error, and that's why... David Coulthard better than him. This season, anyway, I, mean, I love Jean Lacey, but this season he really... He hasn't done badly, he just hasn't done anywhere near as well as Coulthard has. And Damon Hill's in second. You see, this, this is how I expected, this is how quick I thought Damon Hill was going to be when I signed him. When I signed him in 99, I thought this is how he's going to be. He's going to be super quick, right behind Schumacher. He's going to be leading Mika Salo into victories. And... Over the course of the season, generally it's been the other way round, but Damon Hill has taken him 13 races, but it seems like he's actually found his pace. And where's where's Neil McEwen? Oh, of course he retired ages ago. I thought his consistency had let him down, uh, but that wasn't the case this time. Okay. And second and third, what happened to Ralph Schumacher? Okay. We're, we're having a titanic battle with Ralph. Michael Schumacher's comfortably won it unless he retires, which would be a massive shock. And second Ford Z-Tech engine failure with, um, well, that's the second Jordan Ford Z-Tech engine failure with Bruins Bad Keller out there. And Arrows are actually looking likely, well, a few more times they could get points. It's, it's like the good old days, you know, when in 99 when, when Bernardi were way down the field. We were looking, you know, around here constantly, well, down here at the start of the race, with Arrows, you know, seeing can we scrape into the points. Now we are consistently in the points, but. You know, it's good to see Arrows, they've still got that going for them, they've still got... It's still excitement when they get points. Johnny Herbert with a barge failure, that's really unlucky for him. And De La Rosa with a suspension failure, so he's not going to be scoring any points. And that's really tragic, actually, for Arrows. I do feel very sorry for them, actually. And now, David Hill's still running in second, that's fantastic. Hopefully we can finish there. Uh, David Coulthard an electronics failure. That screwed him over. I believe he may well have been running in sixth. So that would have been a point for Benetton. That's gone. They've had double retirement for Benetton. So their race is over, essentially. And now how close is Raul Schumacher to Damon Hill? Very close. Very close indeed. But this track has been a car breaker so far. I don't want to, um, to push the boat out just yet. Oh, there's a helicopter camera. Okay, anyway, tracking, yes. Um, we are going to have to keep an eye out for that. Has Michael Schumacher already finished the race? No, he hasn't. Okay, he's just so far ahead. Can't be bothered to work out the gap between him and... Okay, Ralf Schumacher's got passed. Oh, I do want to challenge this. I really do. Yeah, we are, we've been... Most of the race, we've actually been ahead of Ralf Schumacher. We can challenge this. We can take second back from him. Or can we? Well, Michael Schumacher's won... And we're still holding third and fourth for the time being, with Ralph Schumacher second. Mikasalo's dropped out of the race. A suspension failure on the second to last lap. Well, that's cost him a fourth place. Great. Um, 
that's really disappointing. That's three points. Yeah, three points have missed out on that. Oh. Well, what what can I say? That is really gutting. We replaced the parts before the start of the race. We get Mikasalo still out of a suspension failure. That's... What can I say? Well, regardless, Michael Schumacher's won. And I'm pretty certain that means he's won the World Drivers' Championship. We'll check later on, but... Dominant finish of Michael Schumacher. Ralph Schumacher's in second. Damon Hill, fantastic result for him. It's the first podium with him at Minardi. So that's his first podium for us, which is fantastic for Damon Hill. Tukaki in fourth. Trulli in, uh, Trulli in fifth. Ricardo Zonta for the Prost team in sixth. So that's a fantastic result for Prost there. With Salo in seventh having retired, which is... That's really gutting. With a suspension failure, I mean... It's not even an engine failure, so I, and after all the engine failures we had, that's really quite disappointing. But oh, look at the tech race, Ferrari are dominating that. That's a that's a joke. But you know, okay, we still got 1.2 million prize money, and that's still good. But it's just we missed out on three championship points from you know from Salo's retirement, which is really disappointing. And coming to the driver's title, um, there's only three races left, which means Michael Schumacher has won the World Championship. He is the World Driver's Champion for 2000, just as in real life. That's a fantastic result for Michael Schumacher, and really it has been dominant to him, start to end. And it's, you know, no no surprise he's got nearly double the points of the nearest challenger. You know, so Michael Schumacher, World Champion of 2000. That's fantastic for him, really. And... You know, he's been dominant all season. In qualifying, he's claimed pole position every race, so there you go. In the Constructors' Championship, oh, quick bit of mental maths. Ferrari haven't won it, no. Williams could still feasibly win it, um, but Ferrari, surely, they're likely to win it. And the next race is Monza, I believe, so Ferrari could win the Constructors' Championship at their home race, which the Tafosi will go mad for. Um, but Williams have overtaken us. We're now in third, which, you know, we would still be ahead of them. If we didn't drop points, thanks to Salo. And manager ratings, just behind Jean Todd. Okay, that's fair enough. I mean, considering Jean Todd's just won the driver's title, you know, with Michael Schumacher. So that's completely fair enough. And who's... Ron Dennis is still rated the worst manager. I don't really quite understand that. But anyway, come on to the next race. Well, the next race in the next episode. And God, this has actually been a short episode, hasn't it? But next race, Monza, the Italian Grand Prix. It's the team's home race. It's Fry's home race, so Fry could claim the constructors' championship there, which would be fantastic for them. But we got to worry about, you know, the you know the Italian B team, Minardi. You know, can we do well there? Hopefully so. It, you know, it's long straights place to our advantage. But I will be announcing our drivers um, at the start of the next episode, just before the race. You know, my driver one, two, and test driver. So be sure to leave down suggestions if you haven't done already. I don't think many people suggest their test driver. So, you know. Be sure to leave that down in the comments if you haven't done already. And yeah, I'll see you next time for the Italian Grand Prix, which I'm really looking forward to. Can it be Ferrari success? And can it be Minardi success? Well, we'll find out next time. So I'll see you then.